Don't judge a book by its cover. In this 13th episode of Chip Wars, we're gonna get the series up to date. So far, we've already gone over NVIDIA's latest Tegra, the Apple A6, and Samsung's Exynos 5 Octa, while we wait for Intel to show its hand in the mobile chip market. But this episode is all about the mobile chip that made it into almost half of all smartphones sold in 2012. This summer, a dragon is coming. Come on, you beast! Together, and we live. No, a slightly smaller dragon. Tiny, really. But faster. Way faster. And cuter, but not that cute. A dragon that's smarter. More advanced. Can multitask and doesn't waste power. This summer, a dragon is coming. Not to a theater. Not to an enchanted little village. Nope. This dragon is coming to your phone. Well, technically, in your phone. Make sure your next phone has the blockbuster speed and performance hundreds of millions already love. Make sure it has a Snapdragon processor. CES 2013 was all about mobile technology. Most of the keynotes were from companies that are actively fighting in chip wars right now as I record this video. The battle is on as vendors are deciding which processors to put in their upcoming back-to-school and holiday product lineups. And Qualcomm is hoping to step up its game by increasing its brand awareness. Now I personally know it's tough making public presentations. Yeah, your early videos suck. But I hope to save you the pain of having to watch Qualcomm's CES 2013 keynote. Don't they have millions of dollars? I mean really, how bad could it be? Well, don't say I didn't warn you. I'm part of a new generation. We're born mobile. It's our world, our way. These days, you gotta be mobile if you want to be a top dog. Or a tough ass warrior. Or a CEO. And this year, Paul? Born mobile. Euphoria is gonna give the application the ability to read. You found it. Milk. Great, we did it, hooray. Stop, stop. I get it. Okay, but remember, don't judge this processor by its keynote, and hopefully you'll forget my early videos. In 2013, Qualcomm is rebranding its Snapdragon mm -hmm. processor lineup. The Snapdragon 200 processors will be for entry-level smartphones, while the 400s will be the next step up. But in Chip Wars, we focus on premium chips like the Snapdragon 600. The 600 is kind of like last year's Snapdragon S4 Pro in the Google Nexus 4 tablet and HTC Droid DNA, except it has a 40% performance boost. It will have the first quad-core Crate 300 CPU. It'll max out at one point. 9 gigahertz, improve instructions per clock while possibly using less power than the Cortex A15. For graphics, it has the Adreno 320 GPU, and its unified core shader architecture supports the latest APIs like OpenGL ES 3.0 and OpenCL. In any chip, the RAM fuels the processor with data, and the 600 supports the latest and greatest RAM, LPDDR3. The Snapdragon 600 is sampling with vendors now, and we should see it in devices in just a couple more months. But the star of the show in 2013 might be the Snapdragon 800, which is designed for flagship smartphones, smart TVs, and tablets. The quad-core Crate 400 CPU smashes the 2 GHz barrier in mobile devices. And the Adreno 330 GPU renders graphics 50% faster and doubles the compute performance over the already impressive Adreno 320. Like its predecessor, the new 330 is built on the more flexible unified shader architecture that can compute position, shapes, and colors in the same core unit. All this is managed by Qualcomm's custom FlexRender API to enable the GPU to do more than just graphics computations. Ultimately, the Adreno 330 offers 7th generation console quality gaming on a mobile device, rendering millions if not billions of triangles per frame. While the memory supports LPDDR3, the highlight is 802.11ac Wi-Fi support all on a single chip. For media, it supports Ultra HD and HD audio output. Now it's time for them to focus on bigger devices like tablets and notebooks. So with Chip Wars in full swing, we won't have a full tally until devices hit the market in a few months. So expect a finale episode as soon as the benchmarks are in. And in case I don't respond to you, let me just take this second to say thanks for all your comments. They really help me figure out what works in these videos and it makes all this hard work worth while. You guys are really awesome, and I hope to continue making videos like this as we watch mobile technology blow up throughout the rest of the year. Thank <laughs> you.